Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Church Online. This is our last week of being um, just Church Online. We will continue to have Church Online for the foreseeable future. Um, and we will have um, the chapel open in line with the government restrictions. I hope you have been out shopping. I have. Um, I know that's not probably a godly thing to do of itself, but hasn't it been great to be able to go out and do some things that um, we haven't been able to do for such a long time? I know for me it's all about Bunnings, uh, so <laughs> I'm not sure what your poison of choice is, but it's just been lovely. And, of course, hasn't it been great to be able to see people again? Um, being able to gather with friends and eat together has probably been, for me, the highlight of... The week. So I hope that um, this message this morning finds you well. But wherever you're at, I know for some people that I've been speaking to this week, coming out of lockdown um, has been very stressful. They've uh, they're saying that this um, communally we've developed a little bit of mild agoraphobia, and the fear of going back out and being around people is is very real for people too. So. Um, Wherever you're at with that, we welcome you. Uh, my name's Liz, for those of you who don't know me, I'm a regular worshipper here. And we hope you feel very welcome and very connected this morning. A great way to connect is to get into the chat online. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love you to um, share your thoughts and your responses. It's We were just reflecting, it's lovely to have Patty back in our chapel this morning. I don't know how long it's been, Patty, since you've been here, but probably a few months. So we're very excited um, for all of us to see a new face. It's really exciting, so that's wonderful. And we were just saying how um, it's so great how during this season, even though we haven't been able to physically be together, we've been able to connect through the chat. And so let's keep that going as well. That's been really, really good. So I'd just like to read to you from Romans. Um, what shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you... There goes the song. Not quite yet. Uh, <laughs> or don't you know that all of us who were baptised into Christ Jesus were baptised into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. And that's really what we're on about here at Williamstown Church of Christ is it's no longer I that liveth, as the old song goes, but Christ that liveth in me. That We want to live a new life. We want to live a life that is a life of surrender to God's will, a life of listening to God, a life of responding to God. And it's not always easy, it can be very challenging, we don't always agree on what that looks like, but we are one body and we are united in Christ. And we cannot physically be in the building together yet, but we are together. Uh, as I think Megan said very early in the pandemic, the Holy Spirit doesn't recognise the pandemic. There is no... Um, lockdown of the Holy Spirit. So we just hope this morning that you connect in that way. Um, connect with us, but more importantly, we really hope you sense God. We really hope you have an experience of God is real and alive and we come together as community so that we can grow in maturity and wisdom and that life of surrender to Christ. Uh, we're going to sing a song this morning, the Desert Song, so uh, you can pop it on now, Tiff. Thank you very much. Yeah. 
Good morning, church. It's so good to be together um, in this um, in this way in this format for today. As Liz said, our last online only worship time um, before we relaunch our hybrid um, way of being the church, both um, in person and online uh, next Sunday, the seventh of November. It's so wonderful to praise together, to sing God's praise together. Um, I had a text message with Lisa and Cam this week and they said they've really been enjoying wherever they are, um, Melbourne, in the, uh, up in regional Victoria, connecting in, worshipping with us um, online and it's just been great for them to have that consistency of worship wherever they are in Victoria. I want to read from Isaiah 60 this morning, some amazing words of, of hope from the prophet Isaiah, verse 1, arise, shine, for your light has Come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears to you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Church, this morning, though you may sense there is darkness, though there may be darkness in our world and we grieve that and we lament that and we feel the weight of that, we have a God of light. We have a God who pierces the darkness with his incredible light. Um, we, have a, a, we serve Jesus who is the light of the world, the light who we are called to follow and indeed emanate and, um, and be his presence in the world, which is what we're going to be looking at this morning in our time in God's word. So let's be the people of light this morning and let's remember and re-embrace our calling in this time as we are re-emerging out of lockdown. As Liz said, where some people are feeling uncertain, some people are feeling anxious, um, a lot of us are carrying the heavy sadness of 20 months uh, of what we've all been through collectively and as individuals. Let's be a people of light this morning. Um, be a people of incredible light in our lives and with those around us. So as I said this morning, I'm going to be speaking on the theme of, um, of neighbouring with the title Surprise the World, called to um, call to share Jesus in our neighbourhood. And we're continuing in our Rhythms of Grace series. We're in week four this week. Um, wasn't it amazing hearing from Lynette last week on the theme of rest and just what an incredible, um, helpful message, timely message for us as a church in that theme and with that focus. Um, as Liz said, Liz is here, Patty's here, Tiff is here serving us so well on AV. Um, and um, we are in a moment, aren't we, of re-emerging, and I wonder how you're going with that. I wonder what pace you are taking as we come out of lockdown. Um, whatever pace you're taking, let's really heed Jesus' words in Matthew 11, to learn the unforced rhythms of grace. Let's be a church where we walk with Jesus, we are led by Jesus, we are um, living lives replicating his life of healing and grace and generosity um, to others. Um, as Liz has said, we'd love you to take part in the chat this morning. Thank you for all of the comments so far. It's so good hearing, um, hearing from you and knowing who's joining and feeling like we've got a sense of fellowship around our worship time today. Um, in a moment, we're going to be celebrating communion. And so I'd love you to take a minute to just gather something to eat, something to drink as we celebrate the Lord's meal together. We're really delighted that next Sunday we're able to relaunch our in-person church gatherings and we're also going to be relaunching our Seeds Children's Ministry in the hall which is going to be happening in parallel with our um, chapel gathering and of course continuing our Sunday YouTube live stream which is just so fantastic which is available of course live to you 10 o'clock Sunday wherever you are and on demand through the week. When our church reopens next Sunday um, as we've communicated previously, um, anyone aged over 16 years will need to be fully vaccinated when attending on site for worship. As we've said, for many of us, this feels really counterintuitive uh, to the way church is supposed to work. 
And we at Willie Church and we as a church leadership remain so committed, deeply committed to being a church that is as open and welcoming and inclusive as possible to all people. However, we've, we want to communicate that we sense we're in extraordinary times. There's a deadly pandemic happening around us. And we as a leadership have prayed into this, talked about this at length and feel we are called to protect and care for our most vulnerable people. So that's um, where we're headed next week. There'll be in-person gathering here. Um, everyone will need to show their proof of vaccination as we've probably all been getting used to doing out in the community as well. Um, and um, we are really looking forward to the day when we can reopen our worship gatherings here indoors to people regardless of status. Um, but we feel strongly this is the way that we need to um, be in this time. We are planning some summer outdoor work worship gatherings over December and January which will be open to everyone and we are really excited about these times. We're going to be sharing communion, we're going to be hearing faith stories over the summer, we're going to be um, gathering to share fun together and games and picnic food. So more information will be coming up about that but we're going to be launching that off with our pre-Christmas brunch on the Strand which we did last year for those of you who took part in that amazing time last year and that's going to be on the 19th of De December. I think it is a Sunday before Christmas and we're going to be meeting on the Strand to celebrate 2021, to share the joys, um, to talk together, to um, just fellowship together in person in that way. So it's going to be great. Summer worship opportunities outdoors will be coming up and more info soon. In two weeks' time, we have our church annual general meeting. So just letting you know that's going to be happening here in our chapel after our worship gathering and also live streamed for those of you who want to join in online. And today, the Savo is our family-friendly um, Halloween walk-by, which we're having from 2 till 4 out the front of the church here. It's going to be a COVID-safe way for us as church to just extend love and grace and blessing to our neighbourhood. So come along this afternoon, invite your friends, invite your friends with kids in particular. The um, event is a aimed at children aged 2 to 12, and we're asking for for people to come along in friendly costumes um, and come and receive a free craft pack, a free snack pack. Um, Tiff and Sarah have been working so amazingly on this beautiful event and I really would encourage your church, get the word out, have a look at our social media, share it on your socials today, let your friends know, let your neighbours know and come on down. It's going to be such a fun time. Um, so please be part of that. And um, that ties beautifully in with our theme this morning of being um, the presence of Christ in our neighbourhood, which is fantastic. As always, keep an eye on our e-news, our social media for updates about church life and just to stay in the loop about discipleship tools, anything happening in our community. And if you want to subscribe to our newsletter or get plugged in or perhaps you've been looking and um, sharing in our worship times on YouTube but haven't yet taken that step, We'd love you to go and do that today at our website, willychurch.org.au. You can click on connect, the connect tile, and you'll be able to check out our connect form, fill it in, let us know where you're joining from and how we can serve you. So we'd love you to do that. This morning, we're going to hear a faith story from Anna Paula, and I love what Anna has to share this morning. So let's um, just posture ourselves to hear an encouraging faith story from one of our own beautiful church community members, Anna Paula, this morning. Good morning, church. Megan has asked me to share my faith story. And I was concerned about what interesting should I share with everyone. But then I came up with the idea, wait, why should I not share something simple from my daily life? So it's what I'm going to do today. So the first question, what has been bringing you life and joy in this season? I think is that I have been more confident about myself, my strengths, and my skills. It's a pathway, it's a learning pathway that I have been going through since the beginning of this year. And I would say that thanks to special friends that I met on Wheeler Church, people that care about others, 
people that are there whenever you need through a chat or through a text message send you blessed words to make you feel better i'm so glad to have those people in my life question number two what one or two practices or habits have been helping you most to follow and live like Jesus in recent times. I have been listening to some short prayers on YouTube channel every day, in the morning before I get up and at night before I sleep. And they are so good because they touch you deep inside with positive words to be more confident and how to get over limiting beliefs. And I have also been reading some books that teach you how to overcome negative thoughts and habits. Question number three. How has following Jesus and the teachings of Jesus been changing you or making a difference in your life? I feel that I am more down to earth, more relaxed and enjoying life now in the present without all the worries and concerns of the future. What if this or that happen? So I enjoy now the present. And that's what I have to share with you today. Thank you. Morning, everybody. I think that's better. Thank you. Um, uh, please have something ready to eat and drink with us when we celebrate communion together. Thank you. Today we're reflecting on the verses from John nineteen, John one nine to fourteen, and our theme is surprise the world how Jesus surprises us all the time with his radical love. I came across a sermon written by an American pastor named Rick Ezel, and he put these verses into clear context for me, starting with this little story. I'll be back soon, a soldier told his wife before leaving her and their infant son. Four years of war and fighting went by and the young mother would show her boy a portrait of the soldier and say, see, that's your daddy. One day, he's going to come home. In reality, she didn't know what to expect. One morning, the boy said, Mummy, wouldn't it be great if Daddy would just step out of that picture? <laughs> Thank you. In a sense, that's what God did over 2,000 years ago. As part of his eternal plan, he stepped out of heaven and became a man so you and I can, can look at Jesus and say, that's what God looks like. Jesus became a visual aid to reveal the nature of the invisible Father. He was God in a suit of flesh. He was God expressing himself in a language that we could understand. He was God announcing to the world, I have come. Jesus offers grace and truth. These two words explain why Jesus came to earth. Because he was full of grace, he died for us while we were still sinners. Because he was full of truth, he was able to pay for our sins completely. The good news is because Jesus is full of grace, we can come just as we are to him. We don't have to clean ourselves up first. Because he's full of truth, we can come in complete confidence knowing that he will keep his promise of a complete pardon for our sins. He means it. Eugene Peterson says, Jesus was generous inside and out, true from start to finish. 
In the act of becoming human, he identified with our pain, the pain of loneliness, he felt it. The pain of rejection, he felt it. The sadness of losing a loved one, he felt it. The scars of mental or physical abuse, he felt it. When Jesus became a man, he understood us. He identified with us. He felt our pain and he hurt. His love truly does surprise us. Matthew 26, 26 tells us to remember him this way. While they were eating, Jesus took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body. Please take the bread or whatever you have there to eat. Then he, then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Please drink the cup together. Let's pray. <clears throat> Lord God, Jesus asked us to remember him this way. So we, as a church community, are gathered here today to celebrate him. We thank you, Father, for your mercy and grace through Jesus, and we ask your forgiveness for all the times we slip up and hurt you and your goodness. We ask the help of the Holy Spirit to remind us always that your light is shining through us because we have accepted Jesus as our Lord and Saviour. Amen. Now it's time for the offering. Could you please see the online giving details on the screen? Thank you. Let us pray. Thank you for your generous hearts of this church family as they regularly give us so that the message of Jesus can be heard by the whole community. We pray that these offerings be used wisely to uphold and maintain your church. Amen. Thanks, Patty. And it is so great having you back. <laughs> We've missed you. I'm going to read um, the Bible um, passage, John 1, 9 to 14. I'm going to read it from the <clears throat> New International Version and then from the message. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognise him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. And from the message, the life light was the real thing. Every person entering life, he brings into light. He was in the world, the world was there through him, and yet the world didn't even notice. He came to his own people, but they didn't want him. And whoever did want him, who believed he was who he claimed and would do what he said, he made to be their true selves, their child of God selves. These are the God begotten, not blood begotten, not flesh begotten, not sex begotten. The word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighbourhood. We saw the glory with our own eyes, 
the one of a kind glory, like father, like son, generous inside and out, true from start to finish. Let us pray. God, this morning we ask that we would have open ears and open hearts to hear what you would have to say to us through your holy word. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Amen. It was about three or four years ago now that Charlie and I as a couple started talking about the idea of buying a house. And we hadn't ever purchased a house or property before, but we started talking about would we buy locally? Would we buy in this area of Williamstown that we were already living in the Mance? And over a period of about a year, we discerned together that God was saying, buy a house locally, buy something in the neighbourhood and plant yourselves in the neighbourhood. Um, and... Uh, that God was saying that if anything ever, my, my kind of pushback to God was, well, what if something changed in the church? What if the sense of call change in the future? What if God called us to another church or, or something like that? And God said to us, so into the kingdom here in the inner west. And so we decided to take that step of starting to look for a house. And a couple of years ago now, um, we bought a house in Williamstown. And what went into that journey was that thing of, God, what are you calling me to do? What are you calling us to do? Um, we had savings and we you know, hadn't taken that step of buying anything, but we really felt that God was saying a big yes to us planting ourselves in this area, in this neighbourhood, um, and, and saying yes to the local school and saying yes to this community around us in Williamstown. Um, and that's been a great joy for us. It's been a real affirmation for us as a couple and a family of like, yes, we're called to this area. Um, and something really shifted when we moved in um, just before um, all of the lockdowns in April in 2020. And so that's been some of our journey around neighbouring. We've all been at home so much more than we could have ever imagined in the past 20 months. Um, and it, for many of us, it's been, there's been so many beautiful and wonderful things about that. For many of us, it's been heartache. It's been um, intense for many of us. And of course, our experience of the pandemic has been so diverse between all of us in our community. This week, I came across a beautiful painting, a beautiful painting of a ministry friend of mine, Gabriel Hingley, and I want to share it with you this morning. It is a beautiful, beautiful depiction of his neighbourhood. And he wrote this beautiful um, caption to go with it. And I've had his permission. Um, he's generously said, of course, you can share it with your church today. He's uh, one of the pastors of Dandenong Church of Christ. He wrote this to go with it. As we re-engage with people and potentially travel miles to do so, let's not forget the value of living local. He writes, I for one have learnt to appreciate my neighbourhood more, inspiring me to paint a series I'm calling Painting Within a Five Kilometre Radius. It's possible to experience joy and beauty without having to travel miles to find it. It lies within our homes and on our doorsteps and in the sharing of life with neighbours. What a beautiful, beautiful set of words and a beautiful depiction of his neighbourhood. I assume it's somewhere in the Dandenong um, area, in that area in Melbourne. And this is what I want to talk about today. The idea being that we can and are called to surprise the world with our love and blessing and generosity as we are the people of God called to share Jesus in our neighbourhood. And I absolutely love this scripture in John 1. It's one of my absolute favourites. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, Jesus already, the word, Genesis 1. And through the world, though the world was made through him, the world did not recognise him. And, he, and John writes, he came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, you and I, everyone who says yes, he gave the right to become children of God. 
So I want to point us this morning to three truths that we receive from this passage in John 1. Number one, like Jesus, we are called to inhabit the world, to move into the neighbourhood, as Eugene Peterson puts it in his translation of John 1. Jesus was there in your street before you lived there. And Jesus in the presence of God will be present in your street and in your neighbourhood once you move somewhere else. In your office, in your workplace, in your um, you know, Zoom or other meetings that you're having, Jesus is present there before and after. I love this quote um, from Rich Volotis. I know I've shared a few of his quotes lately, um, but it's beautiful. He wrote this week on um, line, to be on mission in Jesus' name is to recognise that God has been active long before we arrive. It sounds simple to say, but to follow Jesus means that he always gets there before we do. Do you think about your Christmas dinner table like that? <laughs> um, the perhaps difficult or strange relationships in your life or that neighbour that you're trying to get to know or that workmate or um, person that you oversee in your work. Jesus is active long before we arrive in the places that God's called us to in our lives. So church, I want to encourage you today in your workplace, in your school, in your community, in your place that you in your sports club, you are joining in with Christ's presence in that place, in your workplace. Wherever God has sent you, Jesus is already there. So look for where Jesus already is in your life. Where are the, the spaces of grace and generosity and openness and, and inclusion happening in your world, in your sphere? It's been said that you may be the only Bible that your neighbour or school friend or colleague will read today, this year or even this decade. But God is present in all places and we get to join in. We get this incredible invitation to join in. Recently I um, kind of listened um, to a webinar that was on the spirituality of Australia and it was really interesting. I'm going to be sharing some snippets over the coming um, sermons, just, just giving you a glimpse into some of this research. But the experience of COVID-19 is creating in our culture a new context where many Australians are experiencing a renewed spiritual search. During the pandemic, and I'd love you to think about your friends and family, almost half of Australians 47%, I think there's going to be a slide, have thought more about the meaning of life in their day-to-day -day life. So for nearly 40, 47%, nearly 50% of people. And similarly, that same amount of people, nearly half of Australians, have thought about their own mortality more than before. A third of Australians have thought more about God um, more than before the pandemic. And three in 10 people have prayed more in the pandemic. Does that reflect what you sense is happening in our culture? This research by McCrindle is, is excellent. It's absolutely spot on. And these guys are just absolutely guns at um, really gauging the Australian culture and what God's doing and what's happening. So church, God's already working in our world. We just need to look for where the evidences are of God's work in our world and join in with him. How do we do that? How do we join in with God's, what God's doing in our world? Well, like Jesus, we are called to be a people of grace and truth. Verse 14 in John 1, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, John writes, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, Father full of grace and truth. I know for me in ministry, this has been a real go-to. How can we marry grace and truth as we seek to be courageous as a church, as a leader? This is something that I really go back to a lot. Grace and truth, grace and truth. Because, you know, God wants everyone to be born into his family. The invitation is wide and far and broad. So where can you extend grace 
invitation, blessing, generosity, gentleness, respect. Um, one of the things we're doing at the moment is starting to think about getting our daughter Zoe ready for school next year. And yesterday we thought, we'll take a drive to the uniform shop um, in Port Melbourne and just have a look at the uniforms and pick up a book bag which we need for Zoe's transition in a couple of weeks. And we just had the thought, why don't we just message a few of the other school parents and just see, could we pick one up for them? It's such a small thing, but it's like, I wonder if that would extend just gen generosity and grace that we've thought about them. Would they like us to grab that so that they don't have to then drive to Port Melbourne and pick up that thing um, in time for a week's time when all of our children are starting transition? Where in our lives is God inviting us to extend grace, generosity, blessing? Christians can be known for the opposite. Christians can be known for being hypocritical or judgmental. There's things we don't do well and we can name that and we can, we can certainly own that. But church, we're called to be an alternative to that. We're called to be a people of grace, attracting people to the person of Christ. I love these two verses in scripture which really speak to this. From 1 Peter 3, we read this. But in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. What a great command to us around being ready to share our faith stories. But do this with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience so that, you, so that those who speak maliciously against your good behaviour in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. 1 Peter 3. And from Colossians 4, Paul writes, Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, that you, so that you may know how to answer everyone. So church, in our dealings with people who don't know Jesus, and indeed in our dealings with each other, we should be full of grace, of gentleness, of respect towards one another. And you know what happens in our offices and in our sports clubs? when this happens is people are curious they're curious to know what's behind that what what is the um the motivator of that person who seems to be offering something without need for return that's when we get to speak about christ because people ask questions of us people are intrigued people are curious and so thirdly like jesus we surprise the world with our love Michael Frost um, brought out a book recently called Surprise the World, which is where I stole the title of this morning's message from. Um, and he speaks about five practices which, um, which really help us to embody being the people of Christ in our world, in our culture, with those around us who don't know Jesus. And he writes, a word of encouragement is like oxygen to the soul. Who needs a word of encouragement in their life today? We all need encouragement from one another and rely on that in our lives. And in this really fantastic book, Michael Frost urges us um, with, with one of the practices to be a people of blessing, to be someone who every week takes a moment to think, who in my life, who, who doesn't know Jesus, who, who can I bless in some tangible way? And he points out that in church, we use the term bless a lot, but have we really ever considered what the word bless means? Way back in the old English, it comes from the term meaning to add strength to another, another's arm. To add strength to another's arm. And coming out of the pandemic uh, into this new kind of normal we're entering into, who knows someone who needs strength added to their arm? Um, I can think in my preparation this week, uh, uh, as Lynette said last week, God always speaks to you before you speak to others. I was bringing to mind all of these people in my life, kind of fringe people in my life who I was sensing need strength added to their arm. And I sensed God saying, keep reaching out, keep being present, keep the text messages going with people rather than dropping off in the fatigue of coming out of what we've come out of of lockdown. So church, let's be a church of blessing. Let's bless each other and let's bless those around us extravagantly. In our busy world, 
when people are running from one thing to the next, the simple decision to add strength to another's arm is intriguing. People might think, oh, you're coming out of lockdown, you'd be exhausted, you'd just be taking care of yourself and looking for your holiday and your rest. But what if, church, we look for that and we, we need to rest, we really do, but we also look around us. Who needs strength added to their arm? So, um, church, let's really take this on board this morning. Um, let's this week think about who could I send a note to? Who could I send a text to? Who could I arrange a coffee catch up with? Um, who could I go on a walk with? Um, and even just a random gift giving, something that you could leave on someone's doorstep if perhaps all of us are feeling a bit socially overloaded. Things like leaving some hand-picked flowers on someone's doorstep can be just such a beautiful way of blessing someone. There's a lovely Christian couple um, who live in Surrey Hills in Sydney um, named Karina and Armin. And they've, uh, her name is Karina Kraminski. She's been a speaker at Churches of Christ events in the past and is so inspiring to me because they moved into their neighbourhood with the specific purpose of bringing disparate people together. She was featured on the ABC show Compass sometime last year and I loved watching the show and I was so intrigued, this couple that kind of so educated, so intellectual, so clever, so world at their fingertips, because of their call of Christ, moved into a neighbourhood to simply be present there. And she writes this, the more you do it, the more you exercise your courage muscles, then it becomes a lot easier. The, the idea of reaching out. The first time you do it, she says, it's difficult. Then you do it again and again, thinking about maybe your workplace now or your sports team. And she says, One, what, you get to a point where you say, hang on, this is coming pretty naturally now. She says, I get a lot of people saying to me when we talk about this stuff, like blessing your neighbourhood, I'm an introvert. And I say to them, we're introverts. <laughs> I don't think it's the issue. I just think it's having the courage just to say a kind word just to say a kind word and she writes I also talk about the posture of curiosity so just being curious about people and that will trigger something in you to say oh I really like your earrings or is that crystal you're wearing or are you wearing that because you're religious and people love talking about themselves she said nobody will ever say well it's none of your business because people love to share their story so church let's be encouraged by these stories we're not, in, we're not invited, though, to do this alone. One of the um, amazing missional kind of heroes of mine is a guy called Leslie, Leslie Newbegin. And he writes, one of the best evidences of the gospel is the congregation living for Jesus. Now, I'm not talking about next Sunday, a holy huddle of people in here. I'm talking about us Sunday to Sunday, whether we're here or online on a Sunday, we go out into the world to be the presence of Christ in our neighbourhood, in our spheres of influence. And church, we're called to do it together. We're called to do it as one body. Um, we want today's um, family-friendly Halloween walk by to be exactly this, a moment of blessing, of just generosity and we'll do this for you, we don't expect anything in return. We'll organise an event where children can receive a craft pack and a snack pack and have fun taking photos in a photo booth and have a lovely time just walking by as part of their Halloween um, day of whatever they're up to. But actually we're just doing it, we're just doing it to be a blessing. So encourage you to come along today and it's good for us to ask would our community miss us if we as Willie Church moved out of the neighborhood and went somewhere else our neighborhood engagement in the past it's been helping hand in the future it could look like that or something else um, and, and right now it's mainly music is a huge priority for us it's all about being Christ's presence in our neighborhood and being generous for the sake of blessing others with the blessing of God. We want to spill out onto the street, not be a holy huddle inside, and we certainly are not that. So lastly, this fantastic um, quote, which really captivates the message, uh, the, the heart of what I want to say today from Tim Sorens, and um, he writes this, we are called to live out this good news story, not as isolated, well-meaning individuals. And I love that because 
thank goodness. But as a team, Liz is part of the team and Tiff's part of the team and Paddy's part of the team and Lisa and Cam and Frank and Janet and who else is joining on the chat this morning? David's joining in on the chat um, and Karen and George. Um, all of you are part of the team that is publicly encountered in ordinary places, in Coles, uh, when we go to Woolies, when we go to Kmart, when we get back to Bunnings. If the only place our neighbours can experience the body of Christ is during our worship services, we have failed. The only viable way we can invite people to experience the good news of the gospel is by displaying a real community of people in a real place. And he writes, this is the ancient practice that God is calling forth in our new day. So I love that. I love that, church. What a beautiful picture of what we can be and what we are, Willie Church, and what God's calling us to press into more. So let's pray. Let's pause and pray into this for one another. Oh, Lord Jesus, we are captivated again by who you are that you moved into the neighbourhood, you made yourself flesh and bone and came into the brokenness of our world to reveal the Father's love to us, to embody truth and grace and to make possible a reconciliation between the Father, the Creator and creation and us. And so we just thank you for who you are, Jesus. We ask this morning, Holy Spirit, pour out your power on us each one of us gathered this morning and each person receiving this message through the week, pour out your Holy Spirit on each one that we may be able to be the body of Christ in our ordinary places that we go. And we ask that through this next season of church life, as we press into our vision more, as we um, just get excited about what's coming next, God, that we would actually embody the good news, Jesus, of who you are in our everyday lives, in our neighbourhood, through this afternoon's event, Lord, through mainly music, through all of the expressions of our church, God, use us to point people to you, Jesus, to your incredible love, to your radical generosity, to your grace, to your peace. We thank you, we praise you. In your name we pray. Amen. We're going to continue in prayer now and I'd love to invite you, Liz, to come and lead us in a time of prayer together. I'll just give you a hand, Mike. In our time of community prayers, it's not me praying, it's we. We're all praying. So there'll be some prayers I'll name out loud and there'll be some that I won't. I might not even know about them. So this is a time when we pray together. And um, it is. Th this is our neighbourhood. This is our church neighbourhood. So I'm just going to invite us through a time of prayer where we can let that seed that's been planted today really take root and be sown. So I'm going to use the um, model that's used in Lectio 365 today, which is pause, reflect, ask and then yield. So first of all, I invite you to pause just quietly for a moment and become aware of God's presence And to help us pause, I'm going to read Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. 
You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So God, we become aware of your presence. Thank you for your Holy Spirit leading us, prompting us, guiding us, holding us, encouraging us and binding us together as one. And thank you for Jesus, full of grace and truth. As we pray together, I invite you to reflect. Where has God been in your week this week? Where have you sensed God leading you, making you lie down in green pastures, refreshing your soul, guiding you along the right path, being protected by God's rod and staff? having a table prepared for you in the presence of your enemies, your cup overflowing and goodness and love following you. And now we ask... We ask for our world. We pray for world leaders discussing climate change and a sustainable future. And we pray for action to end harmful practices and bring life to new ways of living that are sustainable. We pray for an end to the pandemic, for healing of all of those suffering due to COVID and the effects of lockdown, and for all of those feeling the effects of the divisions in our community. We pray for unity, peace and maturity. We pray for all of those who are seeking work. We pray for employment. For those at the moment who are waiting for power to be restored in Victoria. And we pray for all of those waiting for surgery or who are unwell. For the many, many asylum seekers in our world today, we pray for a home. For the people who are escaping natural disasters, like volcanoes. And for us here at Willie Church of Christ, we pray, bless us so that we may bless our neighbourhood as we seek to love our neighbours, family, workmates and all of those that God has placed around us. May we live into our neighbourhood as you have called us to do. And today we particularly pray for the family-friendly Halloween walk that's going to happen this afternoon, that many families would be touched and feel welcomed warmly and be curious and come back. And finally, we come to a time of yielding. So now, with everything that we've brought before you, God, we yield. It is no longer I that liveth, but Christ that liveth in me. Not my will, but your will. We thank you, God, that we can surrender to you and that your plan for our lives is much better than our plan for our lives. And as we go out this week, show each one of us one particular neighbour or friend, someone who you are asking us to reach out to and bless. We pray that we will see these people in our lives and respond to your calling. We ask for the Holy Spirit's blessing, wisdom and strength as we seek to serve and bless these people and this person this week. Amen. And now we're going to sing the last song, which is, I think, Forever. Yes. So uh, I didn't say at the beginning my usual line, which is, if you're at home, you can still stand up and sing. So we'd love you to stand and sing. Um, wherever you are today. So, yeah, we're going to sing forever. Thanks.
We want to bless you um, and one another as we head out into our week to serve Christ and to surprise the world. Um, Next Sunday, um, we are back here in person, as we've said, in person and online. Um, And Lynette Leach is going to be preaching in our Rhythms of Grace series on climate justice and loving and stewarding creation, which is going to be so great to hear and so great to focus on as a church um, and timely with um, the G20 Summit happening um, also. If you want to focus in and zero in on that theme of of climate and loving um, creation, I know Lectio 365 Reflections are focusing on this in the coming week or two. So if you haven't already checked out Lectio 365, you can have a look at that app on Android or iOS, Lectio 365, and there's going to be a focus coming up on climate justice, which I'm really looking forward to digging into personally myself.
So join us next Sunday in person or online uh, for Seeds here as well uh, for our kids, which is going to be awesome and so exciting. Um, and, um, and let's bless one another as we head out into our week. Father, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Send us out in the power of your Holy Spirit to live and work for your praise and glory in our week. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Amen. Joy.